All right, so it is finally that time. So as you can see, I'm currently wearing my work uniform because uh, 11 months ago and 68 videos ago, I released a video saying that I was going to quit my job for a full year to focus on music production. And yeah, that was about 11 months ago. I'm not going to be completing the full year. I'm about a month off. And the reason for that is timing. The guy that got my position once I left, he just left. So now I'm reclaiming the position that I lost to him when I left. And now I got it back. Anyway, back on topic to the video at hand. Um, so yeah, I quit my job for around a year, 11 months, it's close enough. And I wanna share with you guys the things that I learned, some things that I wish I'd done differently, and just the overall mindset that I had in this whole journey of just being a music producer for the full year. Also, this shirt is going to be drenched in sweat in around like five minutes. All right, so I do have some notes on my phone over here. I might include them in the description of this video too, if you wanna go check that out, I should put them in there. But these notes are going to be the top 10 things that I learned from being a music producer for a full year. Now, there are multiple different avenues that you can take when trying to grow your music career, like some people to go into commercials, you know, making beats for that. Some people can go into more like the industry stuff, like making beats for high-end artists. In my case, I decided that my best option would be growing my brand here on YouTube, making tutorials, vlogs, everything like that to try and grow my music career. Not necessarily the tight beat sort of selling market, anything like that, I never really got into that game. But being a YouTube producer is basically what I've been practicing for the past year. So that's generally what these tips will be focused around. All right. Let's finally get into this. All right, so for the very first tip, I want to start off with a bit of a banger and something that's very important and very relevant to anyone in life. And that's going to be that life itself is going to screw you over and put obstacles in your way that you've got to try to overcome and adapt to. It may seem like the most inopportune time, but life is going to happen whether you like it to or not. Could be good things, could be bad things, could be really bad things. Not to be a pessimist, but yeah, that's the reality that we're in. Now, a lot of you guys that are not new here do know that my father recently got a heart condition, something called pericarditis, which at first, of course, I wanted to be there as much as possible, make sure that he was okay. Um, but after a while there, it just made me realize just how much being with family and everything was super important to me. Oh, this camera's gonna die very soon. You're gonna die. You're on red. That's not good. So in no way, shape, or form do I regret doing any of those things. You know, I would do anything for my family, but that is just one instance of how life can throw a wrench in your plans and you have to try to adapt. And for those of you that have been wondering, my dad is doing a lot better. He's been going back to work. He's trying to get his strength back. Doing all good. All right, you know what? I don't trust it. I'm restarting you. You're getting a your new battery. I've always got a 50-50 chance to put this battery in correctly, and every single time I'm wrong. It just doesn't make sense statistically. Forgot to say one of the most important tips in this entire thing. All right, so I actually just got done recording this video, and I completely forgot to mention one of the big ones, because of course I did. I don't know where I'm putting this inside of the video, so I don't know what tip number this would be, but the, one of the big ones is going to be having a very clean studio. All right, whether it be your bedroom, an extra room in the house, a completely different building, you know, like a like a shed or something. It's super important to have a clean workspace. You know, I actually spent the past, like, if I'm being honest, like a full year of having a really gross studio and I finally cleaned everything up before there would be key lights everywhere to step over those and then wires over here and a lot of like Zevia and LaCroix cans just everywhere. They're just everywhere. So finally, now that I get rid of all of that stuff, it makes the whole process just so much more streamlined, right? Because there's already so many excuses that you have in your head for not recording or for not getting work done. You don't need a mess in the studio to be another one of those reasons. Like I even dusted off the table, all right? That's how legit this was. It's so refreshing to be able to walk in here, open up the window, open up the curtain, and then just start editing, you know? Okay, that's all. That's literally all that I recorded for this was that one tip. So I'll see you guys later. All right, this next one's going to be a little bit more niche towards you guys that are trying to be YouTube producers. And that's going to be getting uncomfortable in front of the camera, right? You always have to try and get comfortable with talking to a camera, thinking that there's people on the other side, even though there's not, and really talking to a piece of glass or two pieces of glass in this case. But I want to go a step further than that because uh, in my real life, you know, when cameras are off and everything, because I'm comfortable in front of them, I speak very quickly. That's how I speak in real life. I've always spoken very quickly, but you could say that's really still fine. And I would kind of agree with you, but at the same time, you know, when you see somebody going up on stage somewhere, right? And they're doing like a, a speech or something, you want to be able to understand what they're saying, right? Especially if I'm doing some sort of like tutorial, I want to get my point across in a way that's coherent. So especially in the past like 10 videos, I really practice on slowing down what I'm saying and trying to be more of a speaker than just someone who's talking really fast and makes a bunch of mistakes. <laughs> so I guess tip number two, if I had to put it into words, would be to practice as if you were a motivational speaker. No, that's not quite right. Hang on, how do I put this? Just practice your speech, all right? Practice being comfortable in front of a camera and practice just being able to talk coherently and slow down what you're saying 
and yeah, that's it. All right, this third one, okay? This third one's going to be very important to me personally, and that's going to be cancel your subscriptions. Your Netflix, your Hulu, your Disney Plus, your, your, your Splice accounts, everything. Cancel all of them. If you're not working a job for the year and you don't have an income, your money's going to get drained. I don't know why that didn't enter my fucking subconscious when I started doing all this stuff because I'm gonna tell you guys a secret that I've not told most people because I'm not the most proud of it. My bank account went down to zero dollars at uh, some point during this year. Now, luckily, stimuluses came in handy and that's legit, I've gotten so lucky because of that. So yes, just a word of caution from somebody who has been doing this, cancel your subscriptions before they get rid of your entire bank account. Very short and sweet to the point on that one. It's just, it's gonna be in your best option to get rid of all your subscriptions because it's rough out there. Let's just go on to tip number four, which is going to be very general, all right? Not just for YouTube producers. And that is going to be organizing your samples in a way that you know how to find them as quickly and easily as possible so you can get your efficiency down and make sure they're not wasting time. There was a period of time where if a sample pack came with MIDI, stems, and the actual full loop, I would try and arrange all those to where they'd be in different places. That way I have all my MIDI in one place, all my stems in different place, and then all my actual loops in different place. But that just doesn't make sense as far as efficiency goes, right? So in this case, simplicity is actually king, where just have everything you need on one place where if I like this sample, I can go find the MIDI, I can go find the stems. Make like a folder of like your favorite drums, all right? It doesn't have to be your drums. It doesn't have to all be from the same pack. If you like something from another pack, bring the snare in and bring the kick in from that pack. Just the ones that you know that you can use right now and then are placed later on if you wanna get some different samples. Also, I should mention that all of these uh, are not in any particular order. One's not important than number 10 or five is not more important than number three. You know, it's just all kind of random. But this one actually is going to be a biggie, all right? Number five. Number five is going to be life balance. All right, strong quotations around the word balance there. So I spent the past year trying to find some balance in between producing YouTube, uh, hanging out with friends and being around with family. That's just not possible. The way that I see it, balance is going to be completely stepping away from certain other things, all right? I truly believe that you got time for two to three major tasks every single day. And that's going to be what your focus is putting on, all right? So obviously because I put a whole year of quitting my job, to doing this. And again, there's not going to be any particular order. One, two, and three are going to be equal major focuses. But number one is going to be making YouTube videos for you guys because that's what I took a whole year off of to do. So that was one major focus. The next thing, which I can never see my life without, is going to be fitness. All right. I love going to the gym. I love meal prepping and all this other stuff. It takes a very big portion of my life. And last but certainly not least is going to be actually making music, learning how to make music, taking time to get better at it, practice it, study it, research everything. Those were the three things I was focusing on in this past year, or what I should say, that's all that, was, that I should have been focusing on. I tried to pick up a bunch of different stuff and focus on that as well, as much as everything else. I wanted to do more photography, more video editing, hang out with friends, hang out with family, which without me even realizing it, I feel took a, like a kind of a, uh, took a toll on my mental. Um, so that's why I say that you have enough time in your day for around two to three major tasks every single day. But that will also lead me to my sixth tip, which is going to be uh, meditation, which is a, a loose title for this tip. Uh, the main thing is going to be your mental health, uh, whether that be meditation, which is what I did to help get my mental back on track. Uh, going to therapy, of course, great one. I actually want to start doing that for myself. Legit, just stepping away from every little thing, not doing any YouTube, not making music, not learning, studying. It could just be going to work or just doing nothing for a week or something like that, just to really reset, uh, take breaks, you know? All right, number seven is going to be a, uh, a saying that I kind of made up, I'm pretty sure. I really don't think I've heard anybody else say it anywhere. But the saying is, when given all the time in the world, the easiest thing to do is do nothing. Point being that I was given a year to do anything that I wanted to. It, I could have stopped being a, a YouTube producer and I could have started making a uh, video game, you know, let's plays and stuff like that for YouTube. Or I could have gone and tried to sell beats for a whole year. I could have done anything that I wanted to, all right? The easiest thing for me to, to do at that point was to just lie down, watch some Netflix, you know, binge some series and do absolutely nothing. And that's the one thing that you and you alone have to control because no one here is going to help you with that. You know, your parents, you might, you know, your friends might try to, you know, say, here, do this. But more than likely, you're gonna come up with distractions and excuses not to do what you were given all this time to do. So just go do it. That's my advice. All right, with that being said, this next one's a little bit contradictory and that's going to be that you roughly have around 
three, maybe four hours of just really good, solid music making a day. Obviously, I'm not saying set a timer and then once that happens, you're done, you know? If you still have creativity flowing through, you just keep on going. But the point being that sometimes when you're pushing yourself so hard, you're gonna be making stuff that you're not really proud of. You might even come back the next day and be like, this actually was not it, like, this is just not good. And that's why I think that being a YouTube producer worked out for me so well, because I could make a beat on camera. It could be usually around like an hour, hour and a half of recording. And then the rest of that is just finishing it up with mixing and everything like that, and then editing and getting ready for the video to be put out for you guys. So once my brain was exhausted of creativity for music, I could go in, and just edit the video, make it the best that I can, and that's how I built the rest of my time. That was number eight, right? No, number nine. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. That was number nine. Uh, I do have two more, so I guess we'll have like a bonus one here. Tip number nine is going to be don't take life so seriously. This is something that I've been trying to learn for a long time and something I feel like I'm just starting to really like, comprehend and get a hold of. Believing in yourself is an absolute true talent that takes a long time to try to achieve. Saying affirmations, telling yourself that you're worth it, telling yourself that you're good enough, telling yourself that you're not a fraud, which is what I was dealing with for like two years, is such an important thing to do, especially when you're just yourself in a studio talking to a bunch of cameras. High key, my life has kind of been changing the past month because of uh, certain things. And the fact that I'm believing in myself more, everything is changing for the better right now. You know, it's, it's crazy how I got here. I'm not gonna go too much into detail, but the fact that I've learned to overcome certain things, believe in myself, know that I'm good enough, it's got me through the next day. But also what that means is to not be too hard on yourself. You know, if, you, if you're not making any good melodies that day, um, yeah, you could use loops or anything like that, but just maybe even just sit it out that day, you know? Or if you feel like you're stuck in a rut, don't be hard on yourself. It's not your fault why you're feeling this way. These things just happen. And it's important to know that these things just happen. And the final tip that I've got for you guys, uh, it is uh, currently 3.45 p.m. Uh, and I'm a little drunk, quite a bit drunk, actually. There's so much effort put into something, whether it be friendships, relationships, everything. I'm not, I'm not getting the same energy that I'm putting in. Think things through. You never know what you're going to say could hurt someone that you don't mean to, or just think things through. You could hurt somebody that you really really care about. But uh, on that note, that is all the tips I'm going to have for you guys here today. So if that's all you came here for, um, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. I do have a little bit of an update for this channel right now. So obviously I'm wearing the hat, I'm wearing the shirt, I'm making this video. So clearly that means that I got my job back and not only did I get my job back, but I'm going to be getting a lot more hours, better pay too, which is awesome. But the point being that going back to one of the tips on this list was going to be the two to three big focuses on day-to-day -day tasks. So the main focuses in my life right now are going to be being a good employee because I started producing right when I st uh, started this job two years ago. Never really made it my priority, you know? So right now I wanna actually make being a good employee a priority. Number two is still going to be fitness. Like I was saying, I don't think I'll ever not have that in my life. Uh, I couldn't see myself without it. As well as I just got my gym membership back at a completely brand new gym right next to my, my work so everything works out perfectly. Excited for that part of my life to continue again. The third third big focus that I want to have in my life right now is going to be driving, which might sound weird to you. If you guys don't know this, and a lot of you guys really don't, I'm 23 years old and I don't have my driver's license. And yeah, that sounds probably really weird to a lot of people. I have extreme anxiety when it comes to driving. Um, been driving for the past four or five days in a row now, and I'm feeling really good about driving for once in my entire life and um, really excited to get my license and a whole world is going to open up for me. So that's gotta be a priority. I'm 23 years old, it's time. So yeah, in that list, you did not hear me say making YouTube videos. Um, does that mean I'm going away? Hell no, I'm not going anywhere. However, that does mean that I'm going to be making this channel more of a hobby. You know, before I was making like two videos a week, you know, roughly, maybe a third one would slip in there, maybe I'll only do one, but for right now, I think I'm gonna be making YouTube videos like once every every week. You know, a second one might pop up if something happens, if it's a quick one. But for the most part, it's gonna be taking a little bit of a back burner, you know, right? Because I wanna really focus on my mental here, make sure that I'm doing okay with myself and doing all the other things that I wanna get done accomplished. In this whole year, we accomplished getting 1,800 
and 70 subscribers. I think that's what we're at right now, 73. Yeah, I've made the threshold for actually being partnered on YouTube. I'm getting paid for this now. It's nowhere near enough to make a living off of it, obviously. That's why I'm going back to work. But I don't feel scared to not upload, finally. You know, I don't want to say that I'm not hungry anymore. I would love to keep on making these videos, but it doesn't seem as much of an emergency. You know, like when I first got started, it was like every other day I had to record and put out a video, you know? It just doesn't feel like that anymore. I don't feel like I'm in danger of losing everything that I've made. I think if anything, taking more time in between videos will be grateful for this channel. So yeah, that's where I'm at right now with my life. And that's all that I'm going to have for you guys here today. So thank you guys so very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.